I'll never forget it. It was basically an email. This is probably July 2014. Okay. An email came in uh, from the UK space agency saying you've been short your airport's been shortlisted as a, a potential spaceport. And we all just kind of went that's very strange. There's always been this kind of myth about the airport being a secondary landing site for the shuttle program. Um, and we had kind of started to look at kind of the next iteration of what those unmanned systems testing might be. And that could be maybe looking at things for the space industry in the future. So we started to do a little bit of like dipping our toe in that water, but nothing serious. And we had the Bloodhound supersonic car testing on the runway, which has a massive rocket on the back of it. And I always remember saying, oh, we, what if we just pointed that up and see, you know. <laughs> um, but again, no, nothing nothing to, to kind of hint that this was going to happen. And yeah, this email came in saying we were shortlisted. And, and it was kind of a moment of, is this real? Is this serious? Um, and we had to do a few months of kind of a knit, not weeks actually, because we had Farnborough Air Show a few weeks after we were shortlisted. And they were like, you better get ready because it's being announced at Farnborough. You're going to have media. And I was like, I had to do really quick briefings for the politicians down here who were like, what are you talking about? Laughing, pasties in space, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and who, who, when, when you say they gave you that or the email came, where did it come from? Who, uh, so who the decided? U- yeah, the UK Space um, Agency, so UKSA. So they had been working on a launch UK program looking at how do we develop a launch capability in the uk we have all these satellites we build here every single one of them gets shipped overseas to launch at the minute and they want is there a reason for that well we just we just can't launch them here okay there's nowhere to launch in the uk because of size because of scale lots of different reasons um i think the marketplace is always been kind of sided with Russia, Kazakhstan, and the US, because they've been doing it for 50 years. Okay. So it's always kind of the given. That's where you send your satellites to launch. The cost that, to enter that launch game is really high. Well, traditionally, it's been really high. Um, to set up a spaceport, to set a launch capability is a lot, you know, is a lot of money until now. And that's where we come in. But so they kind of picked all these sites around the UK that they thought f- could be a launch location. It was desk-based exercise with things like no residential build-up around it, access to the sea um, for ours. It was a long runway. So things like that, just really basic criteria. Um, okay. And then it was announced at Farnborough, and the media just went, you know, kind of mad for it. Um, and so we were up at Farnborough with all this media saying, you know, you're going to be a spaceport. And, and, yeah, those early days. What did that feel like? Um, surreal, I guess. I I'm, yeah, it was it was hard because we were being kind of kind of lumped with <laughs> with this responsibility <laughs> without being able to properly look into what it actually meant at that point in time. So we got through Farnborough and then we just went, right, we're gonna take some time to real first of all, is this something that Cornwall would be interested in? Is it something that we could develop? Is it, you know, what's the cost associated? How much changes to the infrastructure do we need? And then finally, who would actually use it? Um, so we took probably about the next six months to, to just kind of do it on the side. It wasn't my full-time job. It was just kind of looking at it alongside everything else we were doing. And then um, that changed when the UK Space Agency asked us to come forward with proposals. They had a pot of money and they they asked all the spaceports, potential spaceports, to come forward with some some proposals and that was my first kind of real full-time task with spaceport was writing that that kind of bid how many other spaceports are there uh, i think there's eight altogether um in the uk in the or uk in there was eight initially announced um some of them have kind of dropped off but there's probably four of us that are still adva- you know progressing sure. um there's probably two that i would say will happen us and one other in the next kind of few years. Um, so there are different levels. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, it was just really early days looking at that and then putting this kind of bid in. And the bid had to be with, with a potential user of the spaceport. They didn't want build it, they will come. They wanted a business case with an operator to come forward to government to say, this is how we'll use the site. This is how it's going to make money. 
And um, and who would a who would a user be? What would that look like? So a launch launch operator. So in our instance, are you able to say who that is and who? Yeah, that well, it's Vir- it's Virgin. Okay. So one of Richard Branson's um, space companies. So we're working with Virgin Orbit, um, and that's yeah. We pulled that business case together. Um, and took that to government. Um, How long ago did you take that to um, government? That was in 2017, I think it was, um, that and we you, actually went forward with it. So five years ago? Yeah. And um, since then, how's it been progressing and what's happening? Uh, so, yeah, that initial kind of funding bid, and then it was a lot of toing and froing about the f- raising the investment for it. Okay. So several years of... Um, well, we're kind of lobbying Westminster, I did a lot of that. And then it was trying to raise the capital and revenue that we needed to to get the project to a place where we could launch. And so up until, you know, the, even in the pandemic, we were still um, getting the investment. And are you able to say what size of investment you were looking for yeah, initially? Yeah, so um, our launch is um, going to be about just under... T- just shy of 20 million which isn't much in the space industry <laughs> my guess is that most lay people will not have a clue how much money is spent my guess is that people will think actually it could be like a bottomless pit of spending yeah. money is is it like that i mean 20 million seems um, seems small in comparison yeah. to the big things that you see in nasa we are very different because we're an airport it's all there our launch okay. pad is a runway. It's not a traditional. So there's no infrastructure thing. to have to build. We didn't have to. We could have launched probably from day one. We have a long enough runway to handle a seven four seven, which is what Virgin Orbit used to launch to space. Okay. Um, we have done a few bits and pieces to infrastructure just to future proof it and make it more efficient. Um, the majority of that funding has gone into bringing that technology across to the UK from the US, which has a lot of legal okay. <laughs> costs associated, a little bit of infrastructure, um, and then setting up kind of the, the licensing and regulatory environment in the UK. The UK has never launched before. So we've spent a few years now on the license side. So the government stood up the regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority last year, and they we then had and they had to write a brand new piece of legislation to launch in the UK safely. Um, that took a lot of time, money as well, to get that ready to go. And we've then had to submit that license, which is the one thing we're still waiting for. 